The Suns have beaten the Warriors by double digits twice in the last three weeks, and in the second win, they didn't have CP3. Most of us are well aware of Phoenix's embarrassing blowout Game 7 loss to Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Because of how things ended, Phoenix having a productive 2022 offseason was incredibly important. At first though, it seemed like Phoenix had a somewhat weak offseason as they lost JaVale McGee to the rival Mavericks, and Jay Crowder is no longer with the team and on the trade block after losing his spot in the starting five. Despite that, GM James Jones seemingly knew what he was doing after all. Undrafted sophomores in Dwayne Washington Jr. and Jock Landale, along with former warrior Damian Lee, are proving to be seriously under-talked about off-season pickups. Who else did Phoenix sign that no one's talking about, and what makes the Suns so tough to beat? Before going further, just 8.6% of you watching are subscribed, so if a bigger chunk of you were, that'd be huge for the growth of this platform. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and if you're on Instagram, follow at dflowhoops. Despite eventually faltering a large percentage of their franchise ownership to Luka, in all seriousness, the Suns didn't win 64 games last year and a year before that make the NBA Finals because of a coincidence. In terms of this year, it's only the regular season, but on a game winner from one of this team's key offseason additions in Damian Lee, the Suns exacted a portion of revenge on Luka's Mavs. Nothing will make up for Phoenix's Game 7 collapse where the team inexplicably didn't show up when the stakes were at their highest. Like my days of watching my Lebronto Raptors, the Suns fanbase went through a traumatic experience and are looking for anything but false hope. And there's no getting around that Phoenix choked last year. Even taking that in, over Phoenix's first 14 games overall this year, the energy and camaraderie level in the Valley seems a bit different nearing the quarter mark of the year, and Coach Monty Williams evidently has the ear of his locker room, given the Suns are a top three team league-wide in both offensive and defensive efficiency. Amazing part about how well the Suns are currently playing is that they're doing it in an off year for Chris Paul, who's averaging a career low by far 9.5 points per game. Paul has been giving Phoenix a patented 9.4 assists per game, second best across the association, only behind Tyrese Halliburton. Paul's also the best by far among assist leaders in assist to turnover ratio. He's also number two in the NBA in that department. Regarding Paul's scoring, you'd expect the 18-year veteran to somewhat display mileage. And while Paul may have to accept his role getting somewhat smaller, I'd expect Paul's efficiency to increase at some point. Even if it doesn't though, when Chris returns, he doesn't have to overextend himself in this Sun system, given how it's clicking right now. CP's a nine-time all-defensive team player, so if he's the scrappy bulldog that he always is on that end, Phoenix should be good. We'll never forget when Paul hit that clutch shot in Game 7 to bring the Suns within 46, but to be real, Paul has a legacy which can lead you to argue that he's the third greatest point guard ever behind Stephen Curry and Magic Johnson. Along with CP having an off year, Cam Johnson has now missed six games total on the year as of this recording. The North Carolina product in Cam was making an NBA 24th best 43.1% of his three-pointers before going down. Johnson's going to miss the next one to two months after surgery to remove a part of his meniscus. In terms of Chris Paul though, and the reason he doesn't necessarily have to be a top scorer this year for the Suns to be successful, is the young core of this naturally built roster having matured into a big three of their own. The under-26 trio of Devin Booker, Mikhail Bridges, and DeAndre Ayton gives Phoenix a balanced scoring punch. All three of Booker, Bridges, and Ayton are two-way players, owning at the very least a top 10 defensive rating at their respective positions. Not known as a defender, Booker showed off his solid clamps against the Dubs on Wednesday night, as in addition to his 27 points, Booker racked up three blocks. What Phoenix has going with their starting five is replicated with the weapons they have off the bench. A man who just dropped a career-high 29-piece on Golden State in Cameron Payne averages a team third best only behind Paul and Booker of 4.1 assists per game. Payne gives you that Paul-slash-Booker shot creation. Rarely mentioned free agent pickup Josh Akogi gives Phoenix Bridges-esque perimeter defense in short stints. And the center pairing of the screen-setting two-way hustle beast in Jock Landale and near East champion for my Raptors back in 2016, Bismack Biombo, gives you that Aiton beastliness down low. 
Best story off the bench has been the aforementioned Jock Landale, who played 54 games for San Antonio last season and was traded to Phoenix on June 30th in a three-team deal with Boston and San Antonio involving DeJounte Murray and Danilo Gallinari. Before making it to the NBA, the Aussie was an NBL champion and grand final MVP in 2021. A few years before that, Landale finished off an extremely successful four-year NCAA career at St. Mary's. Now in his second year on the very biggest basketball stage there is, Landale's third on the Phoenix Suns in blocks per game, sixth in rebounds, and seventh in points. Jock's extremely fast for a center and is all around a stingy, difficult to match up with big man. Landale's contagious intensity and selflessness has helped make up for the loss of JaVale McGee. Ohio State product Dwayne Washington Jr. also went undrafted in 2021, and after 48 games for the Pacers last year, Indiana decided to put him on waivers. James Jones capitalized on the bulky two-way guard with a low center of gravity being available, and it's paid off. DWJ is one of an incredible eight Suns rotation players who's attempting at least 2.73s on average per night and making at least 35% of them. The other seven doing that for Phoenix are Booker, Damian Lee, Bridges, Cam Johnson, Campaign, Torrey Craig, and Landry Shamit. During the Championship Warriors regular season last year, there were moments when Damian Lee was a big time rotation player. Damian was shockingly efficient and relied upon when you look back at his numbers from January and February for Golden State. Playing 15 outings in January of 2022, Lee made an elite 41.2% of 2.3 triples attempted per night. Damian ultimately lost his place in the rotation come the playoffs, but as former role-playing champion now in the GM booth in James Jones knows firsthand, you can have a winning impact even when you're on the bench. Damien's demeanor was big time for the Warriors' camaraderie, and it didn't hurt that he's Stephen Curry's brother-in-law. The brotherhood, bench sellies, and guard-slash-forward depth that he and Juan Toscano Anderson gave Golden State is something the Warriors' locker room greatly misses. Now Damien's fulfilling that good vibe increaser role and then some in Phoenix, Lee's making 49% of his three-point shots, 10th best among all NBA players. Obviously, given former Raptor Utah Watanabe ranks number one in this stat category, Damien's three-point numbers are inflated. Lee's always been a pure shooter, but the consistency level from this man has been incredibly strange thus far. Not only has Phoenix demolished the Warriors twice, but in the first blowout W against Golden State, they did it in historic fashion. The game on October 25th saw the Suns blow out Golden State by 29, which was the second largest victory of all time over a defending championship team. But I want to know, in your opinion, do you have hope that Phoenix could win it all in 2023? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is Mo Osman, who says Jalen Brown's best weapon is his ability to consistently apply rim pressure by varying the pace at which he attacks the basket in the form of pullback hezzies, then slashing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.